Oh, there you are. Awesome. There we go. Good deal. Well, we are now joined by Bubba Wallace, driver of the number 43 Worldwide Technology Chevrolet for Richard Petty Motorsports. Bubba, uh, it's been a big week for you. Talk about uh, kind of your excitement level as you're getting ready to head to Homestead Miami Speedway. Um, oh, is that what's next on the schedule? I wouldn't know. <laughs> um, yeah, no, Homestead's fun. It's going to be different going back this time of the year. Usually it's the last race of the season, so that's a, it's a big change for the sport. But it uh, should be good. Hopefully the, the weather the weather I've seen doesn't look too good, but it's, it's NASCAR, so that's about normal. It's 100% chance of Florida at Homestead Miami Speed. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and open up the floor for questions. We'll start with Bob Pockers from Fox Sports. Go ahead with your question, Bob. Go ahead, Bob. You're on mute, Bob. Come on, Bob. Yeah, yeah Bubba, I'm sorry. Um, I'm curious, have you had any talks with people about whether to kneel during the national anthem? And if so, kind of what have – it's kind of been the contents of those talks. A uh, manager asked me, you know, about it. And, you know, we didn't get into depth, but, you know, I'm still looking up and, and reading on stuff and, and, and learning exactly what the message we are trying to push across, learn and understand. And um, I think the, the messages that I have been putting out there uh, on the racetrack during the anthem is speaking for itself. So I haven't put much more thought into that. I, I loved that uh, the official Kirk Price had had took that initiative, st stood for what he believed in, uh, kneeled for what he believed in. Uh, the man that served our our nation in the military uh, kneeled, so I thought that was pretty powerful. Thank you. Our next question is going to come from Joshua Sims. Go ahead with the question. Curious because uh, one Dell's family had a uh, Joshua, we're having a hard, hard time hearing you, sir. Yeah, I can't hear him. Josh, we're going to come back. When at Jackville, um, have I had any family? Josh, we're going to come back to you, buddy. We are having a hard time hearing. We're our next question is going to come from Dustin Long. Go ahead with the question, Dustin. Sorry, it's my signal. Thank you. Um, Bubba, I'm, I'm curious. Um, have other athletes, have athletes from other sports reached out to you, um, and, and including maybe those who've spoken up about social injustice in the past and provided a sounding board or con uh, consult you in, in, in this time to kind of help you as you talk about learning and listening and and getting the message across and if those athletes have who, who have they been and what how they tried to advise or kind of consult uh, consult you during this time yeah um you know, obviously you've seen the public public outreach uh from lebron uh, that was pretty big uh josh dobbs who i've been communicating with on and off since we were able to meet at uh at the University of Tennessee practice session there, which was a lot of fun. Uh, he's been in my corner every step of the way and vice versa. I've supported him and everything. And uh, he reached out last night with some uh, powerful quotes that he lives by and, and made, a, made a ton of sense and just kind of fit the narrative that we are living in the world today. So um, there's, been a, there's been a lot of outreach just, just from social media standpoints uh, privately. That was probably one of the ones. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of support in my corner from from all aspects from sports from just normal people just people that are, are wanting to stand up for what's right in this world what what has um obviously a lot has been put on your shoulders um what has that been like in the responsibility and the weight uh of this week or even the last few weeks for you no uh, it's definitely been a lot uh it's mentally taxing um but we were talking earlier it's it's that part of the pedestal um, that that uh, you sign up for. Uh, it doesn't say that on the front page, uh, the, the book of being a, an, an athlete or an icon in the sport. Uh, it doesn't say that on the front page of what you have to go through. It's just part of it. It's in the, 
it's in the under the the fine print, the underlying print there that you have to go through. And and you know when you sign up to become something, you're signing up to become something larger than yourself, represent something more than yourself. Um, and so it's, it's it's like I said, it's part of it. And I'm learning how to manage that uh, along with uh, the racing side of things. So on track things, I have to manage that as well as manage what's going on off the track. And, and I, I would say off the track is a lot more busy, a lot more hectic. Um, thankful for no practice or the three day shows that we're used to because I'd be wiped out by practice time. So uh, it's good to kind of just stay focused on this throughout the week, but you know, you definitely got to do a quick shift, a mind shift um, going into the race. So it's, uh, it's challenging, but I'm learning every step of the way. Our next you. question. Our next question is going to come from Gary Gastelou. Go ahead with your question, Gary. Hey, Bob, and now that the flag and the protest issues have been addressed, what more would you like to see NASCAR do uh, in this area? And then also, can you just talk about your personal experience over the years at the track, times you may have felt uncomfortable there? Yeah. Um, next steps, I, I, I don't know. Um, I would love to see us get back to normal and allow fans to, to come back in full capacity uh, just to see how much more diverse or different demographics we bring in. So I would love to see studies on that as we start allowing fans to come back. So, um, but we are <clears throat> talking about next steps and how to keep the message and keep the ball rolling uh, here on Tuesday with a couple key leaders of NASCAR and a couple drivers that have been kind of pushing the efforts too. So, um, so I'm excited about that phone call. Um, my past experiences, um, you know, I, I like to go out, you know, and, and, and sometimes spend time in the infield with the fans and have a good time. And I haven't been, you know, you know, ridiculed against. I know that's going to change now. I got to be careful what I do. Um, and that's kind of the sad world we live in. Um, you know, my dad had texted me. Uh, you know, he was proud of what I was doing on and off the racetrack, but he was worried about my safety. Uh, you know, going out in public and whatnot. So it's just crazy. You have to think about that side of things. So um, definitely got to watch your back now and uh, can't be like that outspoken guy, just happy-go-lucky guy that would go take a trip on the golf cart or my longboard down in, into the infields or whatever and, and have a good time. So it's definitely different. But, um, but my past experiences um, wasn't anything uh, that, that was blown out of proportion or, or something that, you know, bothered me. Uh, we we always had a good time with racetracks. Thanks. Our next question is going to come from Sheena Quick. Go ahead with your question, Sheena. Hi, Bubba. Um, Sheena Quick with Quick Out the Blocks. I've interviewed you a couple of times throughout the progression of your career. I know one of the first questions I had for you, um, we talked about outreach. And you talked about going into the elementary schools and some of the programs. Um, a message I've tried to convey is that the, the latest moves from NASCAR aren't necessarily out of the blue. There's been efforts to increase the diversity, not, you know, maybe not seen in the public realm if you're not looking for it. How do you suggest NASCAR make those efforts a little bit more public? And, you know, I see people on Twitter, you know, a lot of black people that are excited about coming to NASCAR races. How do you suggest that NASCAR moves forward in making some of those efforts a little bit more public and more, you know, accessible? I mean, obviously after we get some sense of normalcy after COVID-19. Yeah, for sure. I think, um, I think, you know, you're right. We have to do a little bit more, you know, diving deep into our communities and, and doing some public outreach there. Uh, like I said, we'll kind of get more of a direction and, and, and step path uh, after this phone call on Tuesday. So um, I, I don't know, you know, right now I'm brainstorming ideas with, with my team to come up with, uh, what we can do locally and um, help organizations and, and, and whatnot grow and, and get them a part of the sport and, and or expose them to the sport, really. So not everybody has social media. Not everybody watches the news or hear what's, hears what's going on. Uh, so we, we have to make sure that we're, we're getting our message across uh, to, uh, to all people that, you know, somewhat have an interest of wanting to be a part of the sport. Uh, we have to solidify that message that we have conveyed over the last couple of weeks so that we don't stand for, for what's been going on. We're standing up for quality, unity, you know, love, compassion, and understanding, just like what it read on our, our race card on Wednesday. Our next question will come from Christine Brennan. Go ahead with the question, Christine. Oh, it's <laughs> – sorry, Matt, it, it's Colin. Uh, 
Sorry, Colin. No worries. No worries. Bubba, the, we've seen a lot of people in the sports world really applaud NASCAR's move this week. And many in the NASCAR community themselves address head on the fans who may be frustrated with the ban. Uh, what is your message to those fans that maybe brought flags to the track in the past and maybe considering not coming back because of the ban? Uh, let's look at what Marty Smith said. Um, it was to the fans that are upset. We're not NASCAR. We're, we are not throwing or closing a door on you. We're opening up a door for many others. And that's, that speaks volumes right there. And Marty's been a huge, huge advocate in my corner last couple of weeks, last couple of days, got a text message from him this morning. We've been very vocal with each other. Um, and I think that, you know, what he said there is, is spot on. Um, I, um, it's, it's not something that we're trying to take out of your daily life or, or whatnot. We're trying to just allow what I want is people to not feel uncomfortable. Uh, the first thing they talk about is feeling uncomfortable because of something that reminds them of, a negative past and has so much negative history behind it. Yeah. To you, it may see, seem like it's heritage, but others see hate. And I don't, I don't understand why it's so hard for us. We're selfish. We're, we're a selfish nation. Um, but we need to come together and, and meet in the middle and be like, you know what, if, if this bothers you, I don't mind taking it down. I'm not saying go to your house and get rid of everything you have. It's just at a sporting event, a public event where all walks of life are welcome let's just get rid of it. So um, like I said, like Marty said, we're not closing the door on you. We're opening up to many others. Not about you. Our next question is going to come from Bob McMinniman. Go ahead with the question, Bob. Hey, Bob, I know you're all about chasing the checkered flag right now, but that had to feel like your first real win this week. It was such an emotional week for you. I was wondering if you could compare. Was that really? I mean, maybe that was the first victory, and, and hopefully a, a lot, a lot more for you. Yeah, uh, it would have been sweet. I thought uh, the way we fired off there, I was like, "Oh snap! This might be a, this might be set up to be a, a beautiful ending here, or a beautiful beginning to whatever." Because I thought we'd go in the race with the speed we had uh, at Martinsville, and we kind of lost it there halfway through, and, and rally back uh, there late. So. Uh, yeah, this was this was definitely the biggest race of, of my career, um, and not knocking the the day twenty five hundred uh, debut or even my Pocono debut in the forty three car. Um, it's it's just something that there was so much historical Im, impact and movement behind this race uh, that we had just had uh, that it just overpowered everything else that I've gone through. Um, setting it up for what I believe was what's right in the world. Um, you know, that's very important to me. Uh, maybe I didn't stand up in the past, but, you know, now is, is, is more than the time of ever to, uh, to take leadership and to, uh, to, to represent, you know, not only myself, but the sport of NASCAR, my, my, my sponsors, my, my team, everybody involved that helps me get to the racetrack and keep my brand going. Um, you know, it's, it's something that, that it's hard to describe fully, but definitely biggest race of my career. So yeah, it felt like a win. Although we finished 11th. Uh, I don't see that as a win. I see that as the 10th loser. So we got, you got some work to do. Thank you. Our next, our next question is going to come from Jared Oliver. Go ahead with the question, Jared. Hey, this is Jared at NBC 13 in Birmingham. I got a question. Um, Growing up um, in a interracial family, um, I want to know, have you had challenges where you sort of had to prove your blackness to other people or people tried to challenge it? And also, um, you know, the pressures of being in NASCAR, uh, you know, what's that, what's, that, what's that like for you? Just, you know, trying to navigate in this situation in such a white dominated sport? Yeah, no, I think, uh, you know, what I, what I go through and, you know, before all this, you know, I, I didn't have it as bad as, as other African Americans in the community. Um, you know, I, one, I'm, I stay home. I'm, I'm, I'm lame. I sit on the couch. I'm lazy. I love doing that. It's my favorite thing to do. Uh, but even, you know, the encounters that I've had were very few, um, but they were powerful. The encounters I had, the, the negative encounters I've had with law enforcement um, were, were, were very few, but they were, they stood out and it definitely, you know, 
left a or, or marked a toll, left a toll on me, and and, um, and and something that you don't really, you know, pay attention. But it kind of comes back full circle when all this is being talked about, and and you're discriminated against because of, of skin color. The, the 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 comments made, you know, can you afford this car? You know, it's just like, come on, really? You know, what what, what year are we in? Um, you don't know me. You don't know what I do. You don't know how much money I make. So. Um, it doesn't give you the right to ask that question, but I kind of get what you're insinuating. You, you, you think um, because I'm African American and drive a really nice car, you, you wonder what I do. Do I sell drugs or, or whatever it is? It's, it's something that I've gone through and it's, it's unfortunate uh, to, for me to be a part of that. But then I think of how bad others, others have it every day. Um, you know, I've, I've talked to multiple people that my fame and who I am, my name, gets me out of a lot and necessarily is that right no it's not um you know we should all be treated equally um no matter who you are what profession you have joe schmo from down the street you know we should all get treated equally um but that's just not how the system works and the system is so broken with the world that we live in today um and so there's there's a lot we we have to do to uh to change that, you know, that's not going to change overnight. We've been trying to change that for many, many years. So, um, taking it one step, you know, one step at a time, step by step, brick by brick and, uh, building up a, a new image for the world. I got one more question. Um, you know, with the whole black lives matter movement, obviously people have had the freedom, um, or comfortability to speak out. Um, when you chose to speak out, did you kind of, did, were you kind of mentally prepared of the, the uh, reaction you would get in the NASCAR culture? No, I wasn't surprised at all. Um, I knew there would be a lot of all lives matter people. And, you know, one thing that really opened my eyes was, was me was, it was after the Bristol race, uh, I got in a little Twitter, Twitter argument with the, with the respectable guy on there. And, um, you know, he, he, he kind of labeled me as an all lives matter guy. And I responded back. I was like, yes, all lives do matter. You know, I, I believe in all of us coming together to understanding uh, that black lives matter um, to, to kind of create this new image and push that message across. And so we took it privately. We took the messaging privately and, and talked and had a really good conversation. And he's been a supporter of mine for a really long time. So it was good. That those are the conversations that you need to have. You, you kind of get sparked up and fired up and, and want to say something back, but you, you handle it with class and, and move it privately and, and talk things out and, and get a better understanding. It goes back to the messaging that we always say, listen and learn and understand, you know, what people are going through, what they're talking about. And it's, it's as simple as saying, you know, when we say black lives matter, there's a, there's a poster of a little girl that has, that says, we said, yes, we said black lives matter. No, we did not say only black lives matter. We know that all lives matter, but we are trying to, make y'all understand that black lives matter too. Two, T O O it's three letters that were, that, that is left off that people don't understand. Black lives matter too. You know, um, families are, are worried about their kids going out and driving for the first time, getting pulled over and being killed. Like African American community is so worried about that. Like we shouldn't live like that. And the African American community should not live like that. And so it, we're, 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 we're trying to get other people to understand just how tough it is to live in this world right now. Thanks, man. Our next question will come from Jim Utter. Go ahead with the question, Jim. Hey, brother. Um, during this whole time that this, is, this seems like uh, a lot of this stuff has been going on outside the track, you've actually been able to uh, enjoy some of the strongest cars you probably have been getting out of Richard Petty Motorsports, probably, I guess, during your since your tenure. Uh, I know you guys have had hiccups along the way that have prevented you from capitalizing on them a lot but what has it felt like to kind of show up at the racetrack a little bit more consistently with and being actually in the mix of, of the outcome of the race along with everything else that's been going on yeah no jim that's a uh, thanks for bringing that up um as much as we talk about racing you kind of get lost in the translation of what's <laughs> going on today so it's nice to talk about it a little bit uh, no my guys have done a really good job and uh, everybody at Richard Petty Motorsports, you know, ever since we were kind of allowed to go back in the shops, they've been busting their tails to uh, to get our Camaros 
competitive and fast. And we, yes, we've had some hiccups. You know, Charlotte was uh, definitely an eyesore for us, a headache. I uh, wish we could kind of go back and do those again. We had a ton of speed, just the hubs didn't last there. But uh, I'm proud of the efforts that we're doing, you know, on the racetrack. And and I'm, I'm super thankful for, excuse me, uh, for what they're doing off the racetrack to support me. Uh, from Richard Petty to Andy Mernstein, everybody at RPM uh, standing behind me um, and, and believing in me for on track, but also – following me through this journey off track and let me find my way and find my voice and stand up for what's right. So it's a, it's a whole team effort. It's a very co uh, collaborative group that we, I'm excited to be with and uh, we'll keep, keep pushing the envelope. we got a lot of racing left. Um, it kind of slows down a little bit uh, now with the, the midweek races done for a little bit. So we'll focus on Homestead. we got a good package going there. So I'm, I'm excited about that. You mentioned that when you started the Martinsville race, that you have actually had a feeling for a moment like, you know, man, this car's so good, we might be able to win this race. Mm -hmm. Has that happened very often so far in your career? And, and uh, that might, what, did it come as sort of a surprise a little bit for you? Uh, I'd say... Uh, the Cup Series I'm talking about. Um, I would say Indy last year, and you know, I had that moment. You know, we have our little moments of, of success and, and highlights of success. And, it, and it's up to me at the end of the races to capitalize on and, and um, you know, with when you're when you're put when a car is underneath you is put together well built like my guys have done the last couple of weeks, then you know they they believe in me to go out and get the job done. So it's uh, it's been fun to go out and and showcase what I've been able to do in years past of, of winning races and bring out my competitive edge and, and go up against some of the best. I mean, at the end, I was battling seven times Jimmy Johnson, nine time winner at Martinsville. We were trying to get past him. Uh, he started right in front of me at the end of the, at the beginning of the race and finished right in front of me at the, at the end of the race. So. Uh, but it was fun just seeing, you know, who we're going up against, passing good cars and uh, being competitive and showing, showing guys like, hey, no matter what car I'm in, I'm going to be competitive and give it my all. And, and it may not be every race, but those races that we do have those moments are going to stick out and I'm going to be a force to be reckoned with. So I'm not going to back down to anybody. Our next question is going to come from Woody King. Go ahead with the question, Woody. Hey, Bubba, I was kind of interested in the same type of thing that, that Jim was. Let's talk a little more specifically about Homestead this weekend. Normally, you race there at night in November. Now you're going to be in the daytime in June. How different do you think that's going to be? Uh, is it going to be just like uh, start completely over from scratch, or are there some notes that still apply? No, I think some, some notes still apply for sure. We start a little bit during the day for the cup race there. Um, and... I'm pretty sure well, we ran during the day in the Xfinity race a little bit as well. I made it ended at night. Um, but all in all, it's a racetrack. It's hot and slick. It's wore out. We're going to be two tenths off our fastest lap by lap one and a half. You know, it's uh, it's definitely going to kind of be treated the same there. Uh, I'm going to be searching around, moving around a lot for grip, riding up right against the fence. So um, it's – We'll find out. You know, everything's kind of new to us uh, as we travel through. We'll have some rubber on the racetrack from the Xfinity cars. Um, so that'll be that'll be interesting. Um, but we'll just get there, and I'll let you know after the fact. All right, thank you. Yep. We're going to go back to Josh Sims. He's on a new connection. Josh, go ahead with your question, buddy. Yeah, I hope it's a better connection. Uh, Bob, I hope you can hear me. <laughs> nope, not any better. Uh, but just curious, uh, Wendell Scott's family is looking for um, not any better. All right. <laughs> How about, yeah, no, not going to work. Yeah. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll talk to the question and see if we're going to. 10-4. In the meantime, we're going to go to Claire Beeline. Go ahead with the question, Claire. Got it. Okay. Bubba, uh, Alex Bowman was talking about the heat at Martinsville. He said it was the hottest he'd ever been in a race car. He said he lost a ton of weight and he's trying to gain it back. And he's a pretty put together guy, but he said this schedule is insane. I, I wonder at, if you concur with him on that and you're doing all this extra stuff. Alex is just racing, right? Talk about that and talk about whether you felt the same in the car, whether this is like one race after another and hot and just insane. Is uh, is Courtney on here? Um, yeah, I'm I'm battling two jobs here. 
Um, there's a lot going on mentally off the track, you know, just my phone battery is going to die here in probably five minutes. So that might be a good thing for me. Let me focus on some racing stuff. Uh, no, um, no, this, this schedule is, is tough and, and it was hot for sure. Uh, you know, Atlanta was a, a wake up call of just how much extra stress is being added. Talked to Jimmy Johnson about Atlanta and he had come over and offered you know, some help, and he, he wanted to talk, and uh, we were sitting there talking. Stress, it doesn't matter if it's good stress or positive stress or negative stress is what he said. Stress takes a toll on your body, and, uh, and going through all of that on top of racing and humidity and heat is just another factor going in. Um, you know, would it have been a different outcome at Atlanta? Maybe uh, if if we didn't have all this stuff going on, maybe um, did I was I mad and frustrated and moving too fast after all that? For sure, I should have kind of taken it slow, like I did Martinsville. I was I was definitely gassed after Martinsville. It was it was hot, um, no doubt about it. And I was actually thinking like, damn, it's nighttime. It's fully night, full moons out, whatever it is, and it's still ninety degrees inside here. Um, but you know, at the end of the race, I took my time. I walked over to and sat on pit wall. And I, I sat there for 20, 20 minutes after the race just to kind of gather myself and not move around so fast just because your body is, is, is not ready for that yet. So um, it's tough. It's, it's mentally draining throughout the week. And then it's just uh, highlighted more exclamation, part, exclamation point added to it when you have to go out and race 400 to 500 miles uh, on, on that Sunday. So it's a lot. But like I said earlier, I'm learning – one step of the every step of the way make sure i'm eating right drinking right and uh, getting some physical activity in how are you going to handle it rolling forward into miami then uh, i'm sure there's still a lot of requests for you i'm sure people still want to talk to you nationally and now you got the racing coming up and it's just one race right after the other how do you plan to handle it claire i am a uh, in the moment type of guy so Bring it on. We'll find it out. Is there a moment that you just burst into tears or cried or, you know, behind the scenes had a hard time and I'll let you go and thank you. Um, no, I haven't. I haven't had one of those moments. Um, it's definitely been a lot, but it's kind of been, you know, knowing what I'm standing up for and, and uh, leading, being a leader in this message uh, has, has had, you know, the positive stress. It's kind of, you know, made me feel good about things and not work work me down too much but you know just the work that's going into it is a lot and it's taken away from what I, I would like to be doing physically to stay in shape uh, but part of it thank you man good luck good luck Thanks. and Bubba our final question will come from Josh he typed it out to me his question okay. is Wendell Scott's family is hoping to have the trophy awarded to them for his historic win at Jacksonville they put out a video urging NASCAR to do a ceremony for it have you had contact with the family? And how important is that for an icon like him to have the trophy with the family? Yeah, for sure. I think that's, that's big. And obviously that, that brings up a, a, a time and, and where the sport was, was not in a good place. Uh, but that's back when, back when, you know, things like that were normal in this nation um, of, of, of discrimination. And, and we're trying to, obviously get away from that and, and push a new message. And, and Wendell Scott Jr. texted me um, yeah, last night or the night before last. Um, or, or Thursday morning, whenever we race Martinsville. Wednesday, no, yeah, Wednesday, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, he texted me Thursday morning. My days are running together. You see how mentally <laughs> taxing this is. Um, but, you know, he reached out and is just proud of, of what I'm doing and he's glad to see some competitiveness on the uh, on the racetrack you know that speaks volumes to him and his family uh, but as far as the ceremony i think that would be big and and i'll actually you know mention that and talk with steve phelps about, about that and how they're going to handle that because um you know it, there's it's, it's kind of a sticky situation but uh, but it definitely needs to be done good deal well bubba i really appreciate you taking the time to join us now go recharge your phone and recharge your personal batteries and we'll I'm see not recharging down. my phone. It's just going to be <laughs> off for good. Good deal. <laughs> we'll see you at Homestead regardless. Safe travels cool. to you. Thanks.